Hey everyone, Carl Chivester back to another video for today. So it seems like Messi's transfer to Inter Miami has really shaken up the financial world because it has come to a point where Palantir is being compared to Messi. In this case, Palantir is the Messi of AI. Hmm, pretty interesting. It's a note and initiation and a price target to $25 by Dan Ives, pretty popular in the Tesla community as well. He follows a lot of tech companies. Yes, he did have some good calls, but he also does chase trends. Now, what am I talking about? Well, it's not the first time he mentions an athlete when he initiates a price target and coverage of a company. For example, C3 AI, and this is by the way, January 4th, 2021. The LeBron of AI setting up for massive growth, initiating with outperform and $200 price target. Now you might say $200 price target doesn't make any sense. Well, it does make sense when the price of the stock was $138. Of course, since then, the stock price has crashed radio silence. Then the AI hype started to get more attention, more attention. Stock went back up. And now he has a $50 price target for C3 AI. Says here, we believe C3 has turned a corner and is ready to now capitulate on the $800 billion AI transformation opportunities over the next decade front and center. Interesting, right? We aren't stopping there. Rivian, when that was all the hype, guess what the price target was then? $130 price target. So we are initiating coverage of Rivian with an outperform rating and a $130 price target. Rivian Automotive is a stalwart EV startup focusing on redefining the sports utility vehicles with their innovative R1S and R1T models. Rivian is the catbird seat around EV pickups and SUVs. Guess what happened next? The stock price crashed, radio silence. Now, when the stock has gone back up a little bit, and suddenly there is a bit of momentum there, you guessed it. We believe after a number of one step forward, two steps back excuses for Rivian and supply chain headaches, the company is finally making a major turn towards executing on its long-term business model. Definitely has nothing to do with the price of the stock. Demand firm for the company's unique EV model lineup, price target $30. Now, with regards to Palantir, this is not the first time that Dan Ives talks about Palantir, but this is the first time that he puts a price target on that stock. Now, for example, in April 8, 2021, he did talk with Insider under this article, the headline $42 billion Palantir's new $90 million contract to help with safety and America's nuclear weapons branch is key to a crucial initiative to expand its business beyond defense contracts. Then earlier this year, this is a tweet by Palantir Chad, Wetbush analyst Dan Ives was on CNBC talking about the AI arms race. Palantir is in the right place at the right time. They could significantly benefit from this environment where enterprises want to spend on AI. Palantir have that secret sauce and is now expanding. It's a huge step forward for its story. The stock price back then was around seven to eight dollars or so. Why not start coverage there? Well, not a lot of hype, not a lot of momentum in that stock. Now that the stock price has more than doubled, we are initiating coverage on Palantir with an outperform rating and a $25 price target. In a nutshell, we believe Palantir has built an AI fortress that is unmatched and poised to be a major player in this AI revolution over the next decade. Palantir poised to be a key AI player. Now, for those of you in the Tesla community, we have some mixed feelings when it comes to Dan Ives. Remember late last year with all the Twitter controversy, the stock price crashing 60% in a month or two or so, suddenly price target changes to the downside. What changes to the business? Nothing, nothing at all besides the stock price going down. Guess what happened when the stock price went back up? Ah, price target went back up again. Some analysts do these things, they chase the trends, new price targets, stock price goes up, so their price target goes up as well. Stock price goes down, price target goes down as well. Why is that? Well, they need to follow the actual stock price and also they get to be on TV. It's a good market instant, in my opinion. Now, with regards to Palantir and his valuation of Palantir, how does he get to $25, right? 
we're gonna go over a couple of things from his note, not all of it, because I don't want this video to be taken down, but it's going to be interesting. But overall, this is Palantir today. Year to date, 177% return. In the last three months, 129%. If you look at analyst estimates, the growth for sales and EPS. For fiscal year 2023, this is expected to be close to 16% growth, EPS 256.7%. For fiscal year 2024, 19% growth for sales and 21% growth for EPS. And then fiscal year 2025, 21.4% growth and close to 30% growth in earnings per share. So quite nice there. Now, currently, valuation-wise, of course, if you just look at a P-E ratio, 77.8 times. Not very cheap. And if you want to reach $25, it's not getting cheaper either. But his valuation model might explain how we reach that price. Or does it? So let's start here. Palantir Technologies, the messy of AI on the golden track to success. So we are initiating coverage on Palantir with an outperform rating and a $25 price target. In a nutshell, we believe Palantir has built an AI fortress that is unmatched and poised to be a major player in this AI revolution over the next decade. So the secret sauce of Palantir, focusing on human-driven analysis by leveraging artificial intelligence. Palantir builds intelligence platform for data management and security that enable users to address intricate questions without the need for statistical or computational expertise. The company works closely with customers to deploy products, optimize workflows, and produce operational results quickly while incorporating privacy protective features. The company's mission of addressing critical problems faced by institutions across a variety of industries empowers data-driven decision-making in an environment where large data sets are exposed to significant privacy and civil liberty risks. Okay, we know this. Now let's dive a bit deeper. So here they talk a bit about the different use cases by product. So the AIP, then Foundry, Gotham, and Apollo. I'm not going to go over all of this, but it's there if you want to read that. And so we have to talk about this part right here. While Palantir lacks direct competition on a government level, the company is competing with organizations on the enterprise side, such as Salesforce, which is incorporating AI models into existing products such as Tableau, and C3 dot AI's enterprise AI platform. However, Tableau specializes in visualization connecting to various smaller databases for users to see and understand enterprise data, while Palantir Foundry focuses on a larger and more complex data sets, removing the barriers between back-end data management and front-end data analysis for organizations to leverage the true power of its data brings for operations productivity. And now again, Although C3.ai is seen as a major competitor to Palantir by absolutely nobody, C3 targets smaller deal sizes for customers due to its consumption-based pricing model, while Palantir provides opportunities for small to large customers due to CARP's mission to take the whole market. With both a SaaS and consumption-based sales model, given flexibility to contract companies of various size across industries. By the way, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, would really appreciate that. And now, valuation. So how do they reach the $25 price target? So they say here, our $25 price target represents, and here it comes, 10 times our fiscal year 27 revenue estimates of $5 billion at our bull case scenario. I'll read this again. 10x the fiscal year 2027 revenue or sales estimates of $5 billion. That's it. No EPS, no free cash flow, nothing about that. By the way, you will see later down in the table that their models actually stop at fiscal year 2025. So yeah, unless I'm missing a page or something, I, I can't understand this. So after modeling a bull, base and bear case scenario analysis, we believe the stock can continue to re-rate and trade well above its software peer group over time as Palantir continues to expand and capitalize on this AI revolutionary period. And I agree, I agree, right? The next earnings report can suddenly surprise the whole market. And so the stock price jump will be justified. 
We believe Palantir has a generational opportunity to gain a significant share in what will be a $800 billion total addressable market with an unlimited number of AI applications redefined business processes across verticals. Currently, the company trades at 12 and a half times 2024 estimates sitting above its peers, of which most are just starting to take the first small step into integrating AI into its product base. This is where we believe Palantir is ahead of the game, is well positioned to grow for the next three years hitting top-line metrics and accelerating growth by capturing more market share in both the commercial and defense space. And so I'll try and zoom on this thing here as much as possible. You can pause the screen and then look at the numbers yourself. But to me, you're talking about fiscal year 2027, 10 times sales there, but here we only get up until fiscal year 2025, the estimates there. It just it doesn't make any sense and also $25 price target and you're only basing this on 10 times sales for 2027? To me it just doesn't make any sense and again it smells like chasing a trend. Now look before you start roasting me in the comments I'm still a Palantir shareholder I still have a lot of money in that stock but let's be honest here it's nice to get a little bit of momentum yes the stock price jumped on this price target, on this coverage. But where were all these people when the price was seven, eight, nine, ten dollars $10? Where were they? Because we already saw some things moving with the business. Not a lot, but some things were moving already. Where are those people? It's always dangerous when suddenly the stock has jumped a lot and suddenly there is a lot of momentum in the media, right? A lot of people talking positively about this company, about this stock, analysts suddenly jumping in. I'll say this again, and I talked with Arnie as well, Arnie Investing, great follow on Twitter, Substack and YouTube. We said the same thing. It's great to have an extra analyst covering Palantir. That way you get an extra view, whether it's bullish or bearish, doesn't matter. But right now, since there is a lot of bullish momentum here, sometimes unwarranted, sometimes warranted, I think it's time to be extremely careful. That said, it could very well reach $25. I don't know when, but the business itself, not just sales, but earnings and free cash flow need to grow as well. Basing your price target for the next 6 to 12 months on fiscal year 27 sales, to me, is extremely weak. And by the way, if we look at the graph right now, since May, the stock is up 126%. If you look at RSI, yes, we are currently overbought on a weekly chart and I probably think on a daily chart as well. MACD is still extremely bullish there. Earnings are coming up. It's going to be extremely important because a little miss and you can basically guarantee a crash, a hit and a race, well, I think it's going to get very interesting. Of course, we'll cover the earnings report on this channel. So if you enjoy this type of videos, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you have not. Do share your thoughts down in the comments below as well. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.